What's up guys? Thanks for checking out this new video. I know it's been a while, I think about two years since I posted a video. My apologies for that. Working with glass has a steep learning curve and it can be frustrating if you don't have somebody you can bounce ideas off of or somebody you can sit with and observe but it seems like every time I step away and come back, I'm, uh, I'm better equipped and I can punch through those barriers better. I haven't been blowing glass for about two years, actually. I uh, kind of lost interest in it for a bit. But for the past month or so, I've been doing it every day. And it's really enjoyable. Highly recommend uh, at least taking some classes somewhere if you can't set up your own home studio. Today we're going to be making a mushroom pendant. Right now we're gathering up some clear glass. We're going to set that down for a minute. Before we get started making these mushroom pendants, you really want to pull a stringer. A stringer is basically a heated section, normally of color glass. Uh, you basically heat it up so it's, it's real soupy. Not quite like a liquid, not a solid, but it's definitely molten. And you want to grab it on one end and you pull it out slowly. Timing is everything. If you pull it while it's too hot, it gets way too thin too fast and it's not really usable. But if you pull it just right, you can get a nice even, they call them stringers, of glass. And these can be used for all kinds of applications, but today we're going to make mushrooms out of them. So if you ever wondered how they get those mushrooms inside those glass drop pendants. This is how they do it. So we're back on this gather. Going to heat it up and make it a little bit bigger. You saw I put it right in the flame. It was already a little bit hot from when we just were melting it down. So it wasn't just going from cold glass right into the flame like that. But this is all borosilicate glass and borosilicate glass is extremely shock resistant so it makes it really nice to work with in a flame like this because there's really low chance of you uh, cracking the glass due to stress. So as you notice I have the, the glass up in the air and my hand is down because I really want gravity to work on that heat and gather that blob down onto itself. So right now we're getting this, the bottom of this blob ready with some heat. We want to kind of keep the top of this blob cool and really heat up the bottom of it. And at the same time you see me heating that tip of that stringer. And you want to time it right and push it right in there and flame cut it off at the bottom. Now if you push it too fast. Uh, it's not going to really look quite right, and if you push it too slow, the the head of that mushroom isn't going to form right when you push it in. So you really want to work on your timing. After you've done it a few times, you kind of get the, the feel for what the glass is happiest with as far as heat. A lot of glass work is about 
getting your heat right. Sometimes you need it a little cooler than you have it. Sometimes you need it a little hotter. And knowing when to use what heat makes all the difference in the world. So we put my, one mushroom in. Here we go with the second one. Same deal. Before we push it in, that kind of helps the mushroom head form better when we push it in. But if you make that gather too big on that stringer, uh, it doesn't look proportionate. You get these skinny stems and these great big mushroom heads. Kind of melt it back down and make sure it shapes back into a droplet nice. Now we're going to flatten the bottom. Because I want to put some grass and land in here so they're not just mushrooms floating in space. So we're going to get some frit out. Frit is basically crushed up glass. Comes in all different colors. The company that makes this is called North Star Glass. Uh, they're very popular in the glass industry. Good stuff. So we're going to get the bottom of this pendant hot again. You can see it's flat on the bottom. We're going to heat that up and we're kind of just going to mash it gently into those frit containers. So we gather a bunch of um, a bunch of crushed up glass on the bottom of that and we're going to melt it in. It's going to give us a nice effect when we're, when we're done. That's some canary yellow. And then there's some blue green. So I'm going to alternate going between the yellow and the blue green a couple times. When you're working with small things like this pendant, you can leave the frit right in the containers and do what you need to do. If you're working with bigger projects, sometimes you need to put some frit into a tube that you're working with. Uh, or sometimes you need to put it in a frit spoon so you can roll your glass in it uh, without melting that, those plastic containers. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. As you see, I'm going back and forth between two cameras. One's a GoPro uh, mounted on my head. And the other is a Nikon DSLR with a didymium filter on it. So right now we're going to take some of this goldenrod, heat it up, and we're going to put it onto the bottom of this to kind of round out the bottom again from where we flattened it. So as you can see on this tripod mounted camera, you can actually see what's happening in the flame. That's because there's a, a didymium filter on there. It's the same kind of lens as we use in our glasses for eye protection, so we can see what we're doing and we're not going to damage our eyes. So if you, as you see, if we go back to the head-mounted GoPro, you can't really tell what's happening in the flame. So that's why we have these two. So we kind of want to get these up and temperature so they're about even. You can kind of tell by the color of glass and what it does as to how hot it is if it's ready. Clear glass and color glass do act differently in the flame. Colored glass tends to be a little stiffer. Uh, it tends to want to boil easier. You can actually boil glass you get it too hot you get all these little bubbles that form in there and it just makes it not very clear not very nice to look at so you want to be careful of your temperatures again that's another thing uh, you're only going to be able to realize by practicing so we're taking this marver that thing in my hand is called a marver and actually on my torch there you can see mounted there's another marver that's an L marver um, it's basically just a graphite pad. Graphite can withstand heat change pretty well. And 
you can use it to shape glass. So some of my tools are metal and some of them are graphite. Being as they're graphite, you do have to be careful with them because if you drop uh, something made of graphite, it's likely to chip or crack. So we got that goldenrod color on the bottom now and sometimes when we're putting glass together like this if it's too hot it gets misshapen when we push the pieces together so right now i'm just kind of reheating and letting that reform into a nice looking droplet again in future videos i'll zoom in a bit so you can see more what's happening If you haven't already checked out my first two videos, add those to your watch list. Yeah, glass work can be very frustrating and very rewarding. Like I said before, the learning curve is pretty steep, but once you get it, you got it, and it's so much fun. So right now I'm gonna kinda, I guess it'll, it's a relatively hot seal. I don't want that plenty to crack off. So a hot seal is basically when you heat up the two things are going to stick together. You're going to heat them both up and then stick them together. The hot seals stay together pretty well. Uh, they're meant, uh, in a lot of cases, they're meant for permanent attachments. But when there's such a little surface area like this, you can get away with a relatively hot seal and still break it off clean when you're ready. So I need a handle on the bottom of that pendant, which is why we put that there. because now we're going to make the neck on this. Basically going to remove most of that clear rod in my left hand and leave half an inch or so on the pendant. Then we're going to melt that back down into a ball and use our mashers kind of flatten it out a bit and bend it back over so there's somewhere to put a string so you can wear it. I'm going to try to get these videos out about once a week. Uh, sometimes we'll do demos. Sometimes I'll do in-depth tutorials, uh, kind of walk you through things you don't normally see or hear about. So right now I'm going to kind of cold seal up to this and pull that neck out a bit so I have enough to bend it around. See those cold seals, you just use them temporarily and break them off clean using a tungsten pick. Bend that neck around, melt it in. And that's it. We're going to put it in the kiln and call it a day. I appreciate you guys watching this. Be sure to subscribe. Like this video if you found it entertaining. I have to say what's up to my nephews and my niece. Be good. And there's our finished product. Alright guys, peace and love. Take care during this quarantine, during these crazy times. We'll get through this together. We're Americans.